Nippy and I are out on a walk, but uh, this would be a nice place to just talk a little bit about the current season pretty much and about rubber boots. Um, the reason why I'm addressing it is because um, a friend of mine we just talked about it the other day that um, in autumn season when it's like really wet and muddy as it is at the moment in, in my place, uh, it's pretty important to wear some. Um, there's a couple things to think about. It's because um, on one hand you want to have dry feet but on the other hand you also don't want to have like shoes that are like clumsy, big, bulky and heavy as hell and stiff because that is what a lot of people um, are usually thinking about when thinking about rubber boots but the more important part is like don't buy sheep shit because then you get like really rubber boots that are essentially just plastic the really good ones they have natural rubber which flexes much more uh, and um, makes for a much much better wear those ones here those are Nokians um, awesome boots um, I mean most of you probably know Nokians just by thinking about their cars and whatnot you know so um, it's the same company they just also produce rubber boots and those ones here are called Tuura they have um, a wool liner in it a wool felt liner which makes for a much nicer um, climate inside um, I wear them pretty much all year round depending a little bit on when it's like super hot obviously I'm not wearing them but when it's wet and I'm walking over swamps and whatnot I definitely put those ones on however those ones are broken so um, that happens you know it's like when you kneel down like this you get cracks in here you know this one here is, is really heavily broken um, that happens those ones are two years old and I'm like I said I'm wearing them pretty much every day so this kind of shit definitely happens after some time but if I would have had the same uh, pair of shoes but uh, you know paid like 40 bucks for it though would not those ones would have been long gone you know they don't last at all so it's pretty important to buy something that actually holds up and um, works um, and that basically you can transfer that uh, to pretty much everything I just uh, recently had a conversation with a with a colleague of mine about um, cars, you know, that we as as people um, don't think logically when when having our car, when it starts to uh, cost a lot of maintenance, we should like basically get rid of it and uh, upgrade and have another car. And um, I call pretty much bullshit on that because it, um, yes, there's a sentimental value to it, but it's also um, you can fix uh, if you can't fix your car yourself it's much better to keep it because you're not in the long run you don't um, yes it might be a little bit more expensive but it's also you don't um, add more to the carbon footprint even though you might have to uh, you know it takes too much fuel that's that's one reason you know but um, manufacturing a car also adds a lot to the carbon footprint until you have that um, resolve this problem it is much better to just keep what you have maintain it because just replacing a part is much much better for the environment than just uh, just get a new car and throw the other one in the garbage you know or whatever you want you know or just leave it out in the bushes which happens way way too much and that's the same with the with uh, clothing and whatever you know whatever you have use it as long as you can like I said those ones are broken those rubber boots but I'm still using them because yes they get wet inside but I can also dry them out but they still protect me much more than uh, wearing hiking boots and whatnot you know so they still have a value even though they are uh, not intact as they should be you know but I can still wear them once in a while and um, in, in springtime or in summer I will buy a new pair because then uh, when it's getting like really wet outside you know then I'm going back to um, to a proper working shoe you know so until then I'm just gonna keep on wearing them it's just it makes no sense because I will 
I would get, get a new one, but um, even though this one is broken and not working entirely perfect, but I can still wear it, have to maintain it a little bit more, you know, have to be careful a little bit on what I'm doing, but it still protects me from mud and everything, it's just not so much from, from certain water when it's like this deep, you know, but um, it still works in one way or another. Um, if I would get a new one and throw the other one in the garbage, I would get a new one, I start wearing it out for the next half year, you know, and then it's, um, it's already broken in, so to say, you know, and doesn't last as long as, as when I would start wearing it um, later in life, you know, so um, that is at least my point of view. You can, you can see it as much uh, as different or whatever you want to, you know, so, but um, always think a little bit about, like, what is the environmental impact on those kind of things, you know, when you look at old, the older generation, you know, they're still driving around with cars like that, like 30 years old, you know, they're still working. We don't have to lease cars. We don't have to. We just get a car, drive it until it's shit, you know, until it's broken out, you know, until then you can still wear it. This craze of getting new stuff, new stuff all the time, it makes no sense whatsoever. But going back to the to the actual topic. Um, the Tudas, uh, or in general, like the Nokians, pretty much, they always have like a very, a sole that is um, relatively slippery. But when you walk in swamp area and whatnot, you know, it doesn't really matter. If you have grippy terrain in one way or another, they're perfectly fine. Um, but they obviously are more slippery than other shoes in, in, in like muddy, slopey terrain or whatever. But they don't collect mud. And that is a big problem with shoes that have like a really grippy uh, sole with like locks in there that are like you know super tight and everything and just collects mud then you're no it, it's not helpful whatsoever you know it's still you collect mud and then you still slide like hell you know so they don't really add that much to to um, protect you from slipping however of course this is like it's a preference thing i personally i don't mind to have not a grippy sole in that matter you know but um for the purpose of walking in, in grass and mossy terrain in in um, swamps and whatnot, they're perfectly fine. You, know. um, you can also get studs to them for the winter use and uh, on ice and whatnot. You know, so just um, bear that in mind if you're if you're living in an area where that is uh, an issue, ice and whatnot. Get those. Otherwise, uh, it's sometimes much better to get an additional. Um, you know, uh, grippy thingy, you know, like a small cramp on whatnot, you know, that you can just uh, pull over it. Uh, it's much better than just uh, putting locks in there, uh, putting spikes in there and shit. Uh, it's just a preference thing. But um, again, uh, natural uh, rubber, much, much better to, to use. Look for that. Obviously, it adds to the price. I mean, those ones here, they come in like a hundred dollars or 120 or so dollars um, for me they last two years uh, for other people they will last 20 depends on so many factors you know so uh, for me a lot of sh stuff just doesn't last very long because I'm using it wearing it out you know I mean this is a new pair of pants and you see like it's already dirty and shit you know and that's just a common thing when you work with dogs and just uh, being outdoors all the time and uh, living in a tent definitely adds up to the to the wear in one way or another so that's just how it is but um yeah look for for certain things you know it's like a high shaft is, is in one way good that um you obviously have more water protection the little bit of the downside is that um it it obviously is a little bit more clumsy um one thing to think of is like slipping into the sh in into the shoe um I don't know if you noticed, I will make a little like extra shot for that, but this one here is quite wide on the on the on the top, so you can slip in much easier. That's one thing to think of. When you have a really narrow shoe, it's a puck and pain in the ass to get in there. Especially when you have an extra wool sock on or whatever. Uh, that's one thing also to think of, like I hate slipping around in it. It's a lot of shoes are a little bit bulky and whatnot. I always just wear an extra wool. 
a sock in there, a liner, I always wear pretty much a liner sock and a wool sock over it. Uh, quite good climate in there, you know, and then just, uh, you don't, it needs to be relatively narrow in the bottom, you know, so, so you have a good fit in there. Um, if you're just slipping around, sliding around in the shoe, you can't really walk like five kilometers or six kilometers or whatever. Now I'm taking a walk for eight kilometers with Nippy over here, you know, so, and I'm just walking around um, everywhere in camp all the time, so I'm making like, you know, 10, 12, 15 kilometers a day with those things. Um, kneeling down, doing all kinds of shit and whatnot, you know, so it's very important for me to feel comfortable in them and not slipping around and just having uh, a good shoe that fits me well and just walking around because um, that just um, makes the outdoor life or whatever you do, you know, much more much more enjoyable than just having something on that you just hate to wear. Um, the thing is, um, having walking around in muddy terrain and so with your hiking boot just destroys the, the, the boot basically, you know. Um, I have one hiking boot that I'm wearing once in a while. Um, don't like to wear it so much because I, I'd rather go in, in uh, running boot, uh, running shoes, uh, trail running shoes, you know, having good sort of lugs, have good grip, you know. Um, yeah, if I'm getting wet, I'm getting wet, you know, but I would do that the same way with a with a hiking boot in the long run. Um, and and then just wearing a rubber boot that is specifically for wet terrain, otherwise I don't mix those things up. Um, because the hiking boot, the, the leather, even though you impregnate or whatever, it will wear out after some time. If you don't really can if you can't really dry them out properly, they get like really shitty uh, pretty fast. And if you have plus or minus degrees in autumn, which happens once in a while you fuck up the shoe entirely. Once the shoe is wet from the outside or from the inside, doesn't matter, when it freezes, it freezes and it destroys the uh, the integrity of the shoe. You know, if it's the, the Gore-Tex membrane that gets fucked up or if it's the leather that's just getting destroyed because the, um, the water expands and just destroys the integrity of the leather itself, you know, mine are already cracked. And I mean, I'm not using them that much, but that's just what it is, so yeah. Um, rubber boots, good thing um, for certain things, you know, and just look for for certain things. Uh, grippy sole, not always good. Uh, can be good, but not always good, you know. So just uh, look a little bit into that. Get a feeling of like, you know, wear the shoe in the shop. Walk around a little bit. If you feel it flexes quite nicely, it feels good, then it, that's the right choice. If it's clumsy, don't use it because you're not gonna wear it. Uh, so it's just a a dumbass buy, you know, and go for go for uh, a product that actually has natural rubber in it and uh, gives you um, what you need, basically, you know, protection and also flexibility to be able to walk around for a long period of time. Because if you're going out um, and want to enjoy nature, that's the right thing to do, you know, just having something that actually protects you from the elements and makes you go, makes you want to go outside. Alright, have a good one.